Hello everyone, back to you in today's main video. Going to have a look at the weather next week to 10 days in today's main video. Coming up later on today, we've got Stormwatch. And uh, that's going to have a detailed look at risk of thunderstorms coming up tonight and into tomorrow. That'll be with you around 7 o'clock this evening. Earlier on today, we did an update for the Open Championship at Royal Birkdale. So if you're a bit of a golf fan, if you're going to be off to that event or just watching on the telly um, and you want to know what I was going to be doing, then have a look at that video and uh, all will be explained. I say this video is going to be looking at when it's week 10 days and then we'll have a look at CFSV2 for the next month. Running really late with today's video. Sorry about that. So I better crack on. We're going to have a look at the uh, central temperature first of all. So provisionally... Just updated from Hadley up to yesterday, 17th of uh, the month. Provisionally, we stand at 17.4 degrees, an anomaly, can you believe it, of one and a half degrees above average. And this continues to trend through the year, every month except January, which came out average 4.0, almost bang on average. Every month other than that has been very significantly warmer than average. February at 6.1, over 2 degrees above average. March at 8.7, over 3 degrees above average. April at 8.9, 1 degree above average. May 30.2, 2 degrees above average. June 16.0, again nearly 2 degrees above average. And it continues into July with 1.5 degrees above average at the moment. And that's probably going to uh, tick up even more over the next few days with the hot weather that's going on right now. Where we finish with July is open to question. It is going to be a warm and average month. I don't think there's any way around that. Um, just going to be a question of how warm uh, is it going to be. It'll be very interesting to see. Right, let's have a look at the weather next week to 10 days. I'm going to have a look at 500 bit of our high dummy flow charts on the PSU Penn State University website. I've got the ECMD up here on the top and the GFS, which have a look at in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 bit of our 80,000 feet is an area in the absolute high pressure and low pressure being used by the jet stream running above. But let's apply to low pressure, rate to high pressure. This is how things are looking for the next 7 to 10 days. Below average heights from around Greenland and Iceland. Above average heights from the Azores, normally displaced in the Atlantic and bringing the flow through like that. So it's a continuation of a pattern we've had in the summer, really. Always a little bit more unsettled for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Drier and warmer for England and Wales. The driest and warmest weather will be in the south as this big ridge here throws off uh, further ridges into northern France and southern parts of the UK. And that's the reason the south particularly is having quite a hot summer. This is how the uh, GFS is uh, looking. So we've got below average heights out to the northwest, above average heights down to the south, bringing the jet stream through like that. That might be a little bit more unsettled compared to the uh, e 70 but it's not much in it. They're both uh, very similar, really, in terms of their overall patterns. These are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks, the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. This is the heat wave we've got going on right now. It's going to be hot for the next 24 hours. But after that, the temperature is declining into the end of the week and the weekend, or the start of next week. Actually, we're going through a cool of an average phase before maybe at the very end of July, which is this period, just here in the July, start of August. Maybe by then, we're starting to see signs of hotter weather returning. Our next stab in a heat wave after tomorrow is possibly going to be any time from around the 27th, 28th of July through into the start of August. You see there are a few really quite hot outlier members. They aren't quite, uh, they aren't well supported within the GFS ensembles at this stage but uh, watch this space. We might get another hot spell right at the very end of July. Precipitation wise we've got uh, rainfall coming up in the next rain hours in the form of thunderstorms. That's that despite just there. And then more general rain perhaps at the end of the week and into the weekend. So Friday and through to the weekend does look very unsettled. Next week also looking quite showery as well. So maybe a slightly more unsettled period than we've had for a little while. Temperature anomalies for the next week coming out a little bit on the cool of an average side, interestingly, and this does take into account the hot weather that we've got today and tomorrow across many parts of the country. So the anomaly from the 18th of July to the 26th of July is a bit on the cooler than average side. Precipitation anomalies for the week from the 18th, 26th of July 
uh, coming out a little bit uh, wetter than average, average to wetter than average. So it looks a cooler and more unsettled period compared to what we've had for a while. And this is the reason why. This is chart for Saturday. Low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. It looks unsettled to end the week and into the weekend with showers or longer spells of rain. That continuing to sunny as well. Start of next week takes that depression out into the North Sea. It does uh, keep close to the East Coast, though, so more showers running down the East Coast quite probably, and quite a chilly uh, northwesterly wind as well. That will take the edge of the temperature. That low pressure finally gets out of the way by the middle part of next week, and then we begin to extend a ridge in from the Azores High. So turning drier and warmer perhaps into the middle part of next week. And then we go through uh, up to day 10, which takes us to Friday the 28th of July. Well, you see, we're having a go at turning it hot again in the south. There's a ridge uh, pushing out from the Azores High. So that's the Azores High, of course, just there. Got another ridge extending into France from the main ridge uh, that's out in the Atlantic. And that's trying to pull up hotter air from the south. However, it is quite flat, this, on this particular run of the GFS, uh, which is actually keeping it relatively cool, especially so up to the north. But it's not far away from pulling up hotter air from the south. As I say, those final days of July, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st of July, any time in that period, we might get another push-up in the temperature. The East Indian Africa looking like this, very unsettled for Saturday, a low pressure part right over top of the country. There's going to be showers along the spells of rain on Saturday, many parts of the country, and that continues into Sunday as well. And so if you want to know how this could impact uh, the Open at Royal Birkdale, check out the video that we did this morning. Into uh, next week, that low pressure is moving off into the North Sea. We're building up the ridge out to the north and the west, so that turns things drier and warmer through to the middle part of next week looking actually very pleasant with that ridge extending across the country from the main high in the Atlantic. But as we go up to day 10, actually it begins to turn cooler and more unsettled again with winds coming in from the northwest. So a bit of a split between the GFS and the ECDF as to what happens as we get to day 10. Overall next week, I think, starting showery, turning warmer and drier midweek, and then it's up the grabs what happens at the end of next week. Finally, just having a look at the CFS V2 for the next month. So these are the 500 bit of our height anomaly is broken down into weekly periods. The first week period taking us from the 18th through to the 24th of July. The coming week shows that we've got above average heights out to our east, below average heights up to the northwest, doing something uh, a little bit like that with the jet stream. So uh, quite a warmish week coming up and a little bit more changeable, especially so in the north and the west. Moving through to week two, which is the 25th uh, through to the 31st of July, CFS wants to have the ridge out to our west-southwest. So doing something a bit like that with the jet stream. That could be a little bit cooler and a little bit more unsettled as well. The flow coming around the ridge there is probably coming in more from a northeasty type direction, so it could be a little bit cooler, a little bit more unsettled, but not overly wet because we are still blocking off the Atlantic with this uh, rather big ridge. Uh, week three shows a big change. We go through to the 1st and the 7th of August building the heights up over uh, Scandinavia into eastern parts of Europe. That could well be turning the flow into an east-southeast. If there's low pressure coming through under here, and there may be, it's a bit inconclusive whether there would be, but there might be low pressure coming through here. That could be very thundery, especially so uh, for the southern parts of the country. And then we finish up in week four, the 8th to the 14th of August, just with high pressure above average heights generally centred over the top of the UK. That could bring a lot of dry and very warm weather there as we're running into uh, the second week of uh, August. So, a uh, lot to digest. It looks as though we're going to be having the thundery breakdown overnight tonight and into tomorrow, of course. So, we'll begin with that in Stormwatch. After that, uh, I think we're going to go a little bit more unsettled, really, at the end of the week into the weekend. 
I do think we may get some quite substantial rain, and that could even get down into the southeast. Quite uh, unusual. We might even get some of that rain down into the south and the southeast. Beyond that, into next week, uh, so probably starting off quite cool and showery, turning warmer for a time through the middle part of the week and drier. And then what happens if we get through to the end of next week and running into the closing days of July? It is up for grabs. We might get another hottish spell at the end of the month. Right, that's all for now. Come back for Stormwatch this evening. Thanks for watching.